15th, 2 p.m. Something is wrong with Kavna, our beautiful beluga whale. All the weight gain is in one place. Why didn't I think of that before? settle the argument, wouldn't it? It would, but it would expose her to a lot of unnecessary stress. We'd have to take her out of the pool and handle her a lot, so we're just going to wait and see. Just leave it to nature, huh? That's always the best way, Jonah. You two are going to have to bear with me, or without me, until the baby's born. There's an awful lot of work to do. Don't worry about it, Dad. We can take care of ourselves. I think Kavna having a calf is sensational. Yeah, it's sensational for us and for science. Do you realize, if everything works out, this could be an historic first? Dad, we're out of milk. When's it going to happen, Dad? Well, studies of the Hudson Bay belugas indicate that the gestation period is between 12 and 15 months, with the peak calving period occurring in about mid-July. So that means Kavna conceived in the wild long before she got here. You get an A for arithmetic. And you guys are getting entirely too efficient. Wouldn't it be great? Sure would. A baby beluga. That's something. A word of caution. Don't get too emotionally involved. The odds are about 100 to 1 that the beluga baby won't live more than a few days. I know, but we gotta face reality. Come on, I'll drop you two off. We'll signal the school boat to pass us by today. Bye, teacher. Be a good girl. <laughs> June 3rd, 11 a.m. Kavna shares her pool with Lugosi, a handsome 14-foot male, and with Savak, a typical juvenile beluga. Acrobatic, skittish, always looking for fun and games. This is marvelous. A once-in-a-lifetime happening. Successful birth and survival would be an aquarium breakthrough. A scientific milestone. Of course. Science research needs funding, and lots of it. And publicity wouldn't hurt. Uh, Roger, get right on it. Alert the media. Right, Dr. Dunbar. Uh, press, radio, television, the news services, and... Now, just a minute now. Hold the presses. All due respect, George, but first things first. First and foremost comes Kavna. We have to create a natural, stable environment for her and leave her alone. After all, she's going to give birth with no midwives, just the way she would have to in the wild. No stress. That means no big press ballyhoo and hullabaloo. Grant, I wasn't planning a three-ring circus. George, the chances for a successful delivery and survival are extremely doubtful. There are no precedents. Only one beluga has ever been born alive in captivity. But he only lived for, what was it? Just eight minutes. Mm. All right, I'll go along with this if you think it's necessary. It is. Now, we've got a lot of things to do to get ready, so let's hear from you guys. Kevin, we have to. One at a time. Donna? 
I want the pool water monitored three times a day now, instead of just once, to make sure the chemical balance is near perfect. Good. The last thing we want now is any risk of infection. I'd like to record their sounds for study and analysis. What's that going to take? Well, I'll have to install special sound monitoring equipment and underwater microphones. And uh, I'll install surface lights over the pool. Well, surface lights are a strange new element. It might disturb the normal environment. That could result in a premature delivery. Come on, Grant. I'm not talking about Hollywood searchlights. We're doing research here, not babysitting. Well, we won't have anything to research if we lose the baby. And no documentation if it lives. Gentlemen, please. I propose a compromise. We can phase the lights in gradually, one a night, so the animals can adjust to them. Okay. Okay. And no stress, no strain. That's the name of the game. What about you, Marta? Well, I think our mother's going to need a lot more nourishment. I'm going to up her food intake to 24 pounds a day. The choicest herring, squid, mackerel. Nothing's too good for our big mama. <laughs> Can you imagine a baby four to six feet long, between 100 and 150 pounds? Now, there's a strain. <laughs> June 9th, 6 p.m. We're monitoring Kavna almost 24 hours a day. In the past week, she's continued to put on weight. Kavna's now very playful, and we think she even looks happy. Excuse me, Tom. Donna, could you pick up line two and talk to Dr. Steinmetz from Berlin? I can't talk to him. I'm talking to Tom Gibbs in New York on line one. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Steinmetz. Yeah. Did you get a Our colleagues are going out of their gourds with excitement. They want to know every last detail. Tom, you're still the only one who's had a beluga birth in captivity. Can't you tell me anything else? Sehr gut. Danke schön. I appreciate it, Tom. It's not much to go on, but it's all we've got, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we'll need all the luck we can get. Okay, bye. Anything? Not much. One baby beluga born at the New York Aquarium doesn't represent a mass of scientific data. What did Steinmetz want? The same as all the others. Information. Trouble is, nobody knows much about the birth of a beluga. How are you coming with your research into the literature? I've exhausted it. From what Tom Gibbs in New York tells me, they don't even know why their baby died. So all we really have to go on is that when Kavna starts to give birth, there'll be an extreme flexing of the abdomen. The birth itself will take 20 minutes to two hours, and the baby will come into the world tail first. At least the New York baby did. And our research says dolphins typically give birth flukes first. That's any help. And that's about it? There is one more thing, of course. Yeah, our chances for success are about nil. It's always the first time. There is a chance. There's always a chance. Let's tell Kavna that. June 27th, 10 p.m. We are waiting and watching. All observation teams are in place, round-the-clock volunteers, recording every detail of Kavna's prenatal activity and sounds. The waiting's the hardest part. Every little thing sets us off. She's flexing. Now, this could be it. happening here is great. I haven't seen Nicole or Jonah lately. How are they? Oh, they're in and out as much as they can. They're fine, George. Mm -hmm.
July 13th, 9 a.m. Another day of waiting. Another day of watching for signs of the blessed event. Well, Dad, does your baby arrive today? I have to ask the mother. Hello, Kavna. Are you delivering today? She's not talking. Maybe she's too polite to talk with a mouthful. Do you know she's eating up to 30 pounds of food a day? Well, there's plenty of time to get her old slim figure back after the baby's born. That's what they all say. <laughs> Donna, she's expelling her amniotic fluid. It's starting. I can't believe it. Look at that. That is fantastic. July 13th, 7.50 p.m. Mother quiet and calm, absolutely no signs of distress. There's no flexing of the abdomen that New York told us to expect. I guess we're the experts now. Oh, History is being made here at our aquarium. It's fantastic. It's so cool. Everything checked here. Watch oh, yeah. the time and everything else. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Roger, you're covering this, aren't you? You know, it's so fast. She may have had a previous birth in the world. Okay? No, really? She is really yes. calm, isn't it? Uh -huh. Look, look. starting. This is a remarkable opportunity, kids. None of us have ever seen a whale birth. I think I see something. It's health looks, I hope. That's the baby's forehead. Oh, no. It is. She is going to deliver a head-first birth. The worst possible thing that could happen. Why is that so bad? All of our research says that they're supposed to be born tail first. Head first deliveries result in stillborn young. Look, his head's out. He's so small and he's so still. This doesn't look good. Please be all right. July 13th, 9.22 p.m. Kevin looks good. She's taking it all in her stride. Her eyes are open, but they look blank. Baby is delivered up to its pectoral fins, limp, just hanging there, half born. Please come on. If ever a god smiled, let it be now. Look! It's opening its mouth! And why you get My God, it's alive! <laughs> it's breathing! Our baby whale took his first breath at 9.50 p.m. It's breathing! He looks perfect, Grant. He does, doesn't he, George? when the baby was born. It, what, well, it's hard to describe. I almost cried. I know, I felt it too. Like I was somehow part of it. Look. What are you gonna name him, Dad? Uh, I've been thinking about that. Two act. Tuak? It's an Inuit word. It means the only one. Huh? What do you think? Eh? Dad, I read that mother's milk is the best thing for a baby. Oh, you bet it is. Guess that's why we're so healthy, huh, Dad? <laughs> yep. It's got a secret ingredient. Yeah? Love. <laughs> Gentlemen, 
uh, ladies, please, I have an announcement. To protect the mother and baby, we cannot allow you in at this but time. But can we see the baby? However, the aquarium has complete film coverage of the birth of the beluga baby. Prints are being made ready for a release to Remember television. You take some pictures? I have press releases here for you all. And you're in luck. Here comes Dr. Dunbar, director of the aquarium. I'm sure he'll be happy to make a statement and answer your question. Dr. Dunbar, would you care to give an impromptu news conference here? Well, I'm always very happy to oblige the ladies and gentlemen of the press. I can tell you at this time that the mother and calf both appear to be doing very well. The calf is male and has been estimated at being just a little bit short of five feet, and he's weighing in at between 75 and 100 pounds. Right. Yeah. Uh, our press release has all the basic details available at this time. Thank you. Morning, Jean. Going on around here this morning? Oh, you. Everything. This place has been a madhouse. The phones have been ringing off the hook. Calls from all over the country, all over the world. Who let the news out? One of our ecstatic staff must have leaked it. It was on the air by midnight. <laughs> Your colleagues are intrigued, too. They've been calling and calling and calling. Who called? A lot of impressive names here, Doctor. Dr. Konoff in Moscow, Ling Pao in Hong Kong, Sir Henry Teasdale from London. Oh, Sir Henry. <laughs> you want me to start returning some of these for you? In a bit. First, I want to take a look at our very special family. <laughs> Mother and child seem to have captured the minds and the hearts and the imaginations of everyone everywhere. It was the happiest and the most crowded of times at the aquarium. The weeks that followed were like one long celebration. from all over the world, pouring in every day. There's never been anything like this. <laughs> I know, that's because Tuac's the only one. Yesterday was the highest attendance in the history of the aquarium. Let's face it, George, the kid's a star. How's he looking from your point of view? Well, he's eating well, he's putting on weight, with the major hurdles overcome. I think the kid's gonna make it. In short, everything's coming up roses. <laughs> Dr. Roberts, emergency. Line three, please. Line three. Let's go. Dr. Roberts here. What is it? He just started to show a snaking and a curving of the spine. Anything else? He's been laying on the bottom of the pool like he is now. And then, for no apparent reason, he comes up to the surface and just floats there with a heavy listing to the side and breathing very rapidly. But just the water intake jets to the pool and create less of a current for him to swim against. I'm gonna go down to the underwater viewing room, take a closer look. Okay. What do you think? I think we've got big trouble, George. Something seriously wrong with him. November the 1st, 4.30 p.m. Our 24-hour emergency watch has been going on now for almost three weeks. Poor little fella. We've used all the resources of modern medicine and science, and nothing's working. He's getting worse every day, every hour, now that he's stopped eating. What do you think's causing it? His blood tests show that he has a bacterial infection that's caused by a nocardium organism. Where did it come from? We don't know. Water analysis shows it wasn't in the pool. 
He could have contracted it from something as far out as waste from birds that fly over the aquarium. But we just don't know that. All we know is that Tuak is dying. What did the latest blood tests show? The antibiotics aren't working. The infection is spreading. Jonah and Nicole called again. They want to know if you're going to be home for dinner tonight. Oh. Could you do me a favor, Donna? Call them, tell them, I'm sorry, I just can't make it. They've been missing you a lot, Grant. I know. I, uh, I want to talk to you. Not now, George. I got to call Tom Gibbs in New York and see if he has any suggestions. I've been using tetracycline, Tom. It isn't doing the job. Could you suggest something else? I've asked everywhere. You're my last hope. I guess I'm just grasping at straws. Huh? Okay. Thanks, Tom. You've got to stop driving yourself and get some rest or you'll be on the sick list. I'm okay, George. It's too act that sick. It's the same for all of us. And all of us at the aquarium. There's a pall over the entire city. I've been getting calls from all over. Not just from professional people, but just people who care. I've known you for a long time, Grant. I know how much your work means to you. But you can't do any more here for Tuac. There's always a chance. Maybe. But your children need you now. Oh, you know that, George. I have responsibilities here, too. Then it's a question of priorities. Who, what means most to you? Tuac, your job, or your children? Go home. on November the 1st, 111 days after his birth. We lost our little beluga baby. kids. Come on, sit down for a minute. Dad? Would we have lost Tuak if he had been free? I think he would have gone even sooner in the wild, Nicole. 
We had all the tools to save him, and we couldn't do it. I don't think anybody could have. But he lived longer in captivity than any other baby beluga ever has. Mm -hmm. And because he did, and because of what we learned, wherever and whenever the next baby beluga is born, his chances for survival will be much, much better. And I think Tuak, as short as his life was, brought something very special into our lives. Joy, a knowledge of kinship, and lots of love. And even a kind of inspiration. Because I think the little fellow was a shining example of how we can all survive against the most impossible odds. He was a winner, wasn't he? It was in my book, son. The only one. <laughs>